This week, Chris Osgood cheers on the Jets. The NHLPA presents Be a Player. Brought to you by EA Sports NHL 2002. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Welcome to Be a Player. I'm Brett Lindros, and this week I'm in Long Island, New York. The island's about 120 miles long, and with all that rocky coastline, lighthouses were very important for marine navigation. The lighthouse here at Fire Island was one of the first sites many of the immigrants and visitors saw upon arriving in America. Now, one of the new sites in Long Island this season has been goaltender Chris Osgood. His arrival, plus the addition of Alexa Yashin and Michael Pekka, have led the Islanders back to respectability in the Eastern Conference. Later on in the show, we'll take a look at defending champs, the Czech Republic on the Spirit of Salt Lake. But first, here's part one of our Be A Player profile with Chris Osgood. Being from Alberta, I'm guessing hockey was the focus during the winter months. Yeah, when the snow fell right away, I mean, we were, even before then, we were out playing street hockey here, getting ready to go out on the ice and grew up in Edmonton. When Edmonton was winning the Stanley Cup, so I mean, hockey obviously was number one in there. I remember when we had a team meeting, so I asked who wanted to be the goalie, I put on my hand and I brought the equipment home. My dad wasn't happy. He didn't want me to be a goalie. He actually drove me back to the coach cells, gave back the goalie stuff, and wouldn't let me play that year. So <laughs> I, did, I actually I wasn't allowed to go in net for a while. I had to learn how to skate first. When you came to Detroit, could you tell the team was close to something special? Yeah, we had a lot of good players when I was there, just a lot of talented players. Some older guys, and they were trying to bring in some younger players. I think it was myself and McCarty and Draper. There was only three or four of us that even got an opportunity to make a team that year. And I'm real lucky in that aspect where, I mean, if I, if I wouldn't have made it, then I might not have made it for four or five years. Heading into the 97 playoffs, you'd had two good years in a row. You were an all-star. Did you think you'd establish yourself as the number one guy? Oh yeah, I thought I was going to play that year. I mean, uh, I didn't. I played in the playoffs the two previous seasons. I didn't really see that any reason why I wasn't going to play. Other than, you know, I was young then still, and Mike Vernon was a veteran guy. He'd already won a Stanley Cup, and he played well, and he was hurt that year for most of the season. So I figured, yeah, he's probably going to play. And when I didn't play, I mean, obviously I was I was upset at first and angry, but then after I thought about it, you know, Vernon, he was a great goalie, and he was just as deserving as I thought I was. In the 98 playoffs, you swept Washington in the final. What was it like heading into the last game? It's actually that whole day. We're up 3 nothing in the series, and you, you wake up in the morning, and you're like, I'm playing to win the cup tonight. Like, there's not many times in your career where if you win that game, the cup is going to come out after the game, and you get to handle it. But you know what it is? It's like relief. <laughs> there's been so much pressure for two months. It's almost as if it's like just a total body release. You're, you're proud of what you've accomplished, and you're so happy, you, you can't even imagine. It's, it's just pure happiness and relief. In eight seasons with Detroit, you had four 30 win seasons. Only Terry Sawchuk has more shutouts as a Red Wing. You won two Stanley Cups, yet this past summer the Red Wings went out and acquired Dominic Hasek. Did you have any idea that they were looking to make a change? No, I was, uh, I had no idea. I, I knew after we lost in the first round, and even if we had won, they had said they were going to make some changes and do some things just to try and change the team up. You know, obviously you don't ever think it's going to be yourself. I was shocked. I mean, I didn't know what to think. And then after I talked to the GM, he just explained me everything that happened. I mean, they had an opportunity to get one of the best goalies in the league. And at that point, I just, you know, decided, you know, maybe my time had come there. I'd been there for a long time and had a good run. And it was this time for me to move on. Was it hard for you to prepare for the upcoming season when you didn't know where you might end up? No, I got, actually, I went on the ice more than I ever did before because I knew I'd have to be ready regardless. I knew I wasn't going to be there. Actually, I was glad I went in Detroit because I got kind of like a, a farewell. I got to hang out with my friends, you know, say, say goodbye kind of thing. I mean, I'm here now. I want to do well here and win here. To me, I can reminisce about Detroit when I'm retired. And, and the guys always cut me down to cut the court all the time. They always tell me, I, when we went to Detroit, they told me to get in the right dressing room. And when they were here, I was... I even went to their side for two minutes and they were all over me in the hallway. So, <laughs> the I, so every time it's even brought up, they're just all over me and delivering scissors to my stall and stuff. What did you know about Long Island before you got here? 
I knew nothing about Long Island. The day before the waiver draft, GM and Detroit said, well, you could go here, name like four places, and I was going to Long Island. I don't know what to think about that. I know they finished like 30th the year before, and which, which was dead last in that league. And I thought about it, and they had Yashin and Pekka, and we got picked up a lot of good players, and couldn't have picked a better place to go, to be honest. Actually, we're kind of like Detroit was before we started winning. I mean, we lost a couple times in the first round, had some, had some tough seasons, but we learned from that and then started winning the cup. And I think that's, we're the same here. I mean, we've got a good young team that's going to be good for a lot of years. And I haven't been here for them, but the drought's been for far too long. And we love to get ourselves in the playoffs. And when you get in the playoffs, anything can happen. It's now time for Be A Player Trivia. To play, send your answer to NHLPA.com slash Be A Player. All correct answers will be entered in a random draw with a chance to win an NHL 2002 game courtesy of EA Sports. All other correct responses will be entered for a chance to win an autographed NHLPA jersey. For complete contest rules, visit NHLPA.com and click on Be a Player. Name the player who has been the Norris Trophy runner-up a record six times. Next, we go back to the island with Jerry Hart. I think playing on a team sport absolutely transcends the, the game of hockey and the sport. In October of 1972, the New York Islanders joined the NHL and played their first game here at Nassau Coliseum. Over the years, the team would win four straight Stanley Cups and many great players would wear the blue and orange jersey. Jerry Hart was an original Islander back in 72 and today he is still helping to promote hockey here on Long Island as you'll see on After the Game. Despite his small stature, Jerry Hart played like a giant on defense. His hard-hitting style and knack for timely goals made him a valuable member of the New York Islanders' blue line. Even though he was not part of the Stanley Cup dynasty, his best memories are playing hockey on the island. You know, getting drafted in the expansion draft by the New York Islanders, seeing that team evolve, uh, certainly the, the year 1975 is, from a, from a pure hockey standpoint, is a, is a memorable time when we took on the Philadelphia Flyers and took them to seven games. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, that was just a, a, an awesome moment in the history of the New York Islanders. And, and, you know, I remember being a big part of that, scoring some key goals and, uh, and it kind of defined my career, I think, as, as uh, somebody that uh, was going to be in the NHL for, for some time. Today, Jerry's latest venture still finds him close to the game he loves. In 1991, he developed the rinks, which is a year-round training and conditioning facility. We are more than an ice rink facility. We are a multifaceted family recreational uh, facility, and uh, you know we have a big following here in the summertime for summer day camps. We have a swimming pool complex. We have a fitness center, daycare, you know, food service, you know, and as well as the uh, typical ice rink type of activities. That's what makes this facility work. I have tremendous uh, enjoyment with working with the kids and seeing the development of young players and seeing the success of some of the players that, uh, that have come through our programs. Every Monday night, almost year round, we have a program here where we bring in uh, 12 and 13 year olds here and work with them on the ice and, uh, and then take them to a few hand-picked tournaments uh, each year. I think playing on a team sport absolutely transcends the, the game of hockey or the sport uh, into business. Uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't be successful here if I didn't have a good team, if I didn't have a facilities manager that, uh, you know, that was good at his job and took pride in what he did and, and carries his, his load and an operations guy that takes a great deal of pride in, in how we, uh, you know, what our image is to the public and how we communicate, you know, with our customers. Every, every morning when I come in to my desk, I always have an opportunity to look at this picture, which is my hometown up in Flint Flon, and it's a picture of the mine up there. And uh, it, uh, it's a great reminder of my roots and, uh, and where my father worked for 45 years, and, and uh, I, I don't ever want to forget uh, that, uh, you know, what my background is and, and where my beginning was, and I, I feel very humble about the fact that uh, I've been able to come to a city like New York and, and uh, make it in this in, you know, economic environment here. Be a Player gives you a chance to ask your favorite NHL player a question. For your chance to participate, visit NHLPA.com. 
Carrie Bradshaw of Edmonton, Alberta asked Todd Marchant, what tips can you give young players on how to carry the puck with speed and not lose control? Well, Carrie, the first thing that I would do is uh, try and push the puck ahead of me so I can uh, keep my feet moving. Um, it's a lot easier to skate when you got the puck out in front of you, and then when you get into traffic, you got to bring it in tight. Coming up, more with Chris Osgood and the New York Jets. If, if I was to get hit by one of these linemen, I, I don't think I'd be available for the rest of the season. <laughs> Time now for the Universal Music Hit Parade, featuring I, Mother Earth, and Summertime in the Void. to you by Ford. Here's Craig Simpson. It takes a great deal of courage to put your body between an NHL slap shot and the net. Yet every game you'll see players willing to pay the price. At any level, blocking shots is an important part of the game. Brendan Shanahan makes a great block here, killing a penalty. But what's important to notice is the positioning of Shanahan's legs. By coming across and keeping his legs stacked, he gives his goaltender an opportunity to stand up. And the positioning of his legs allows the padding to take the blow. Sometimes you're in a vulnerable position like Darius Kasparaitis here. But he goes straight down and allows the shin pad to take the blow. Now there are times when you don't want to go down. Eric Brewer here doesn't want to go down to give the Ducks an opportunity to make a pass across. Instead, he goes like a good goaltender and makes the play with his stick. Five on five, you have to block shots as well. Rem Murray's in a vulnerable position because there's a gap. He can't get out to the point and he knows that there's traffic to the net. So what does he do? Lie down and the shin pads make the block. Killing a penalty you have to be able to read. Chris Drury has an opportunity to isolate Ethan Morrow. Morrow goes down for the block and look what happens. The pass goes down but Morrow gets up and back down flat and is able to make the second stop. Blocking shots will not only help your team win but you'll quickly become your goaltender's new best friend. Know Your Hockey, brought to you by Ford. New Yorkers are passionate about sports and they have lots of choices. In hockey, there's the Devils, Islanders and Rangers. Baseball, it's the Yankees and the Mets. And football, it's the Jets and the Giants. The New York Jets are headquartered in Long Island and are the team of choice for most Islanders. Today, Chris and I are going to cheer on the home team on part two of our Be A Player Profile. So Sal, you got one of the best tailgates going on here. I think probably the best. Well, I want you to meet Chris, He's the new goalie with the Islanders. Hi, Hi Sal. How are you? Nice to see you. I've been talking to some of your friends who say they've been coming here for years. Now, I want to give you a little rundown here of what goes on, what time you get here, what are you cooking, what's going on? That's a lot of information. I need it all. We do breakfast until 10, 10.30, and then we close the omelet station and we begin with appetizers. We do ribs and sausage, hot dogs, hamburgers. But today, special treat today. These are Long Island clams. Would you like to try one? Well, you sort of Yeah, scared. I'll try one. All right. There's no, nothing on there, just the flavor of the clam. Have a clam. Huh? This is a Long Island thing. It's good for the people around you. It's a good PR thing. Oh, I love seafood. There you go. It's awesome. No problem. Bengals! Go Bengals! We got this game! Woo! Go Jets! Yeah! Chris, we're here at the Jet game. They got the Cincinnati Bengals in town. Have you ever been to an NFL game before? Yeah, a couple in Detroit. I mean, it's, it's going to be a lot of funners today in Detroit. Those are some great games, but, you know, New York fans are a little different than any others, and it looks like we're going to have a, have a great day, and uh, hopefully the Jets will win. I'm pretty excited. It's the first time I've ever been down on the field for an NFL game. This is really cool. These guys are even bigger than you. I'm surprised. <laughs> 
it's funny watching. I mean, by the time the ball snaps, how quickly the plays happen, it's like split second in the NFL. Oh, yeah. it's, it's like that in any sport, though. Yeah, as a fan, it looks totally different on TV. Now that we're getting down here on the sideline near the field, that things happen so unbelievably quick. I mean, I hate to see if either you or I are out there right now. Things might get a little <laughs> ugly. If, if I was to get hit by one of these linemen, I, I don't think I'd be available for the rest of the season. <laughs> yeah. Come on, D. We, need a, we need a pick and a run back. Hey, we need a turnover. We need somebody to get crushed over here. Well, let's see if they can hold the three. No, touchdown. 7-3, the Jets are trailing. We need a big second half. Yeah, we need the Jets to come back and uh, get a couple touchdowns, maybe a field goal. I mean, it's been, it's been a great game up to now. The atmosphere is unbelievable. A little cold, but uh, I mean, it is a little cold. Cold. from Canada, so we're used to that. Exactly. These Bengals seem to be in a pretty good mood. I'm going to see if I can kick a couple off that heated bench and sit my butt down. You're going to help me out? You're going to back me up just in case? Let's get one of those linemen to lay on top of me for a while to keep me warm. <laughs> Fans. He's going wild. That's that fireman. Oh, yeah, the fireman. Uh, in, in person, he's even more intense than you'd ever believe on camera. So it's uh, it just goes to show you the way the New York fans are and how passionate they are about their home team. No, that's exactly what I was thinking. You know, I see him on TV, but to hear him yelling at people and freaking out, it's kind of fun. I mean, we were going to go up and talk to him. We're kind of afraid to, though, because the <laughs> guy is nervous. so intense. We're a little I'm nervous, a little nervous myself. <laughs> Yeah. And one of the things about New York, though, is like fans have certain affiliations with certain teams, and it seems like if you're an Islander fan, you're a Jet fan, and you're a Met fan, and it goes back to certain different reasons. But the Giants and the Yankees and the Rangers have all similar fans. But have you ever met any of the guys from the Jets? Yeah, well, there's a lot of tradition that goes on with the teams for one reason or another over the years. And I mean, it's just like you were saying, but I mean, I've met a couple of Jets players at the game. Our, our team doctor is the same doctor for the Jets, so he's probably on the sideline right now. It's easy for me to come here and, and, and cheer for the Jets and hope for them to come for the big win today. Hopefully the Jets pull this one out. It's getting close, though. There's no question Probably, about that. The Jets have been known for a lot of fourth quarter comebacks this year. Well, that's one of the main differences between hockey and football. Hockey is, you know, obviously a flow game, be a little bit more creative. Football is all about timing, making sure you're in the right place at the right time, knowing your plays, it's all set. You got that big playbook they gotta go through. Aren't yeah. you glad you don't have to learn that? My playbook's about half a page long. <laughs> Keep the puck out of Keep the, the net. Keep the puck out of the net, that's all it says in one quick sentence. <laughs> the first and goal now. Only a couple seconds left in the game. Looks like the Jets are going to go home victorious. Hope you had a good time. I sure did. Well, I most certainly did. A, a big win for the Jets today. And even better, uh, I had a great time hanging out with you today, Brett. And we had a, we had a good day. First Jets game? Oh, yeah, first Jets game. Big victory for the Jets? Yeah, for sure. Excellent. Good luck the rest yeah, of the way. You and me. the Islanders. Thank you. The defending champs next on Spirit of Salt Lake. You have to win three games in a row to, to win the gold medal. It's not easy to ask, it's not easy. Be a player, sponsored by EA Sports NHL 2002. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Welcome back. The North Shore of Long Island is known as the Gold Coast. Back in the late 19th century, wealthy New York industrialists began building opulent estates in this area. By the 1920s, it was notorious as a playground for the wealthy. It is an era captured in literature in F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby, and many of the mansions in this area have been settings for motion pictures, including Citizen Kane, Sabrina, North by Northwest, and Love Story. Now, hockey's Gold Coast currently resides in the Czech Republic. The Czechs are heading into Salt Lake to defend their Olympic crown. Here's a look at Team Czech Republic on the spirit of Salt Lake. Since capturing gold in Nagano, the Czechs have won three straight world championships. The addition of young players like Patrick Elias, Thomas Coverley, and Peter Sikora should make this Czech team even better than the 98 gold medalists. Vlasek looking in front, got the scores! Hey, dude! Sometimes if you, you can have uh, better players, but it doesn't have to be necessarily a like, uh, better team on the ice because uh, it's going to be uh, pretty tough for coaches to put us together and uh, uh, put the right guys together and uh, perform good. So if you take the, the players, you maybe you'll have a better team than we had in Nagano. I think we 
we can be as good as we were four years ago. In tournaments like this, it doesn't matter how many stars you have on the team, but you know how we play as a team. And we will be focused and ready to do anything to try to win a game. Michael now can jump to a lead. Yes, he scores! The motivation is always there. We want to win every time, you know. Last year, World Championship, same thing, you know. Everybody was saying, you cannot win it for a time, and we did, you know. And now they'd probably be saying, you cannot win second time. Well, we got chance. If we work hard and the team is coming together, we got chance. You have to win three games in a row to, to win the gold medal. And it's not easy to ask, it's not easy. Like last time, you know, it was the best. We beat Canadians, we beat US team, we beat Russian. I think these three teams are, were the best in the world. I think to beat Canadian, it, it's something really special. It was probably the best, you know, for the feeling of our team, for the people in the Czech Republic, because it's a country where hockey means everything, and we beat Canadians, so probably to beat Team Canada, it really means the best. Thing. Be a Player Trivia is brought to you by EA Sports NHL 2002. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Name the player who's been the Norris Trophy runner-up six times. This guy was a runner-up six times. Norris's defense one. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Easy question. Go ahead, Ty. I'll let you have this one. Six times. Six times runner-up. It's not Ray Bork. Played with a guy who was so good. Uh, Ray Bork. <laughs> no. What's going, bud? My man. Is he still playing? No. Salming. Boria. Boria? Of course oh. not. So Should have been. Could have been. A Chelly. Not Bobby Orr. I have no clue. I'm clueless to that. I have no Brad Park. Oh, Brad Park. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a Norris Trophy runner up six times. Brad Park. Done. Done. <laughs> Ryan Maxwell failed to clear it. Park with a shot, he scores! Brad Park lets one go from about 10 feet inside the blue line, and the Bruins use the power play to take the lead. Boy, oh boy, Brad Park. Well, that does it for another edition of Be a Player. I'd like to thank Chris Osgood for joining us this week, and I'd like to wish him and my former team continued success along the way. Now, next week's show is something you're not going to want to miss. It's our annual All-Star Show from Los Angeles this time. We're going to see what we get up to in the City of Angels during the mid-season spectacular. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Brett Lindros is clothing supplied by The Coop, clothing for men, Toronto. NHLPA.com is your source for the latest stats, scores, and NHL player information. Click on Be a Player for the latest show information, or to send us your questions and comments. You'll find it all at NHLPA.com. Welcome back. The north shore of Long Island is known as the... <laughs> New Yorkers are passionate about sports, and they have lots of choices. In hockey, there's a Rangers and Rangers. Wow.